down here this day. It's good to see everyone. It's good to see Mark and Joanne and Kevin. And Caitlin. And Caitlin. It's good to have you here today. At this time, are there announcements from the church family? I have one. Um, we received in the mail this week um, a donation for our community center um, from uh, Tom and Nina Cooper. Some of you may know Tom and Nina. And they sent us a check for $500 uh, for the community center. And the note is, um, we are glad to see your church building, continuing to serve the community in a spiritual way. God will be pleased and reward you for all for your services, Tom and Nina. Uh, very nice. And I also call your attention to the announcement on the back concerning uh, the picnic that we were going to participate in with next week in Highland Park. Uh, your session felt that maybe this was not the right time to be doing that. So we will be here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> same place, same time. Yep. <laughs> Anyone else? I'd like to thank everybody on behalf of the Dallas family for the uh, prayers and thoughts this last week. And uh, all the work the ladies did at the community center was very impressive. There were a few non believers in that crowd. And with the combination of Diane's sermon and the eulogy and the showing of true Christian love, we might change Amen. It's good to see John here today, too. He hasn't been here for a while. It's good to see him. And we also pertaining to the luncheon yesterday, I returned a big dish and bottle it that's out front here that has the jello and the banana and the lemon in it. So someone here brought that and here to take home. You got that if you brought a dish and you didn't get to take it home, it might be out there. Anyone else? News letters are in the back. Let's prepare our hearts to worship our risen Savior. Father God, as we celebrate our independence this day, May we also celebrate our dependence on you. It is so good to be here with the family that you have given us, with brothers and sisters that love us and love each other. If it were not for Jesus, we would have no hope this day. We would have nothing to look forward to. We may as well be called to bed. But because of Jesus this day, we come here and we celebrate the hope that you have given us. May this worship reflect the love that we have for our Savior. In your name, amen. Please join me in the call to worship. When the world divides us, God, Holy Spirit, make us one. When the world calls us orphaned, come, Holy Spirit, make us a family. When the world leads us astray, come, Holy Spirit, call us home. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place.
service. It was once said that it's our job to sin and Jesus' job to forgive us. It might not be our job, but it's what we do, and we seem to do it very well. So we need to take time not to just confess our sins, but to repent of those sins. With that thought in mind, please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Almighty God, you are eternal, gracious, loving, and steadfast. We come into your presence knowing that your mercy is beyond our deserving. None of us is worthy of your tender care. We confess before you our sins of self-righteousness, pride, and possessiveness. Remove our blindness to our faults and increase our sensitivity to those around us. Renew your peace with us that we may approach you with confidence and serve you with joy. We ask it through your Son.
Okay, kids. How are you guys feeling today? Kids? <laughs> You're all kids, right? Everybody doing good? Writing. Writing, yeah. I was making a list. Now, we make all kinds of lists, don't we? Can you can you tell me some of the different kinds of lists? Bucket list. A bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't making that list. Not yet. Nathan, can you think of any kind of list I might make? Christmas list. Yeah. Shopping list. Shopping list. Anything else? Well, I'll tell you the list I was making. It was um, <laughs> my birthday. What somebody say? I need a list. Well, this, this is, is a list. My birthday's in February, so I just want to have it ready for Frank so that he knows exactly <laughs> what I want. Um, diamond earrings, <laughs> slippers. And I thought in December it's probably going to be cold, so I decided that maybe a warm fuzzy blanket might be good too. Sound good? Now, that kind of made me think of scripture today. And in scripture, I'm going to read it to you, it, it's the 23rd Psalm. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So what that is saying, that first line, and I felt kind of bad after I made that list because it says here, I lack nothing. Now I want a lot of stuff, but I don't need a lot of stuff, do I? And, and not only do I lack nothing, but he gives us some pretty nice stuff like green pastures. You go outside and you see the beautiful green pastures and uh, he's with us all the time. He comforts me. He pre prepares a table for me. It says, my cup overflows. And then, to top it all off, after all that, we're going to get to be with him forever and ever. Now, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that so much better than making a list of stuff? So I want you to remember that, that Jesus provides and we lack nothing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you this day that you provide for us. Sure, there's stuff that we want, but we don't need it. You give us everything we need. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. At this time, joy to concern folks. <laughs> church family. We want to keep Bill and Gail and your entire family in our prayers to begin the grieving process. Are there others? Jen? Yeah. And Jen had a normal day yesterday, so that's a... Yeah, she slept a lot of these things that since October she hasn't been able to get out other than a doctor's appointment here and there, and she actually went down to pray, then she
are you feeling today, Heather? So so. So so. Yeah. It's it's good to have Mark and Cheryl Ann and the family here. Um, welcome. Joanne. I had a joy yesterday. I went to my great grandson's fifth birthday, and his name was uh, Walter Merle King. <laughs> and he acts a lot like his great <laughs> 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 I also had a joy. Uh, well, my boy got out of rehab. He's at home now, and uh, he said he's going to do outpatient rehab, but he's doing much better than he was. So. Good. That's good to hear. I follow him on Facebook, and uh, it's good to good to see that he's doing it's so well. share my bunny story then. <laughs> <laughs> Just forced to. Um, Friday night, Jason uh, decided to sleep out with Gwenny in a tent. <laughs> and she was so excited. She's two years old. So she was so excited. They bought a lantern and she showed Papa her lantern and she was talking about, I'm going to camp out, I'm going to camp out. And, and so the night of the, the camp out, Frank went up and checked in and she wanted everyone in the tent and then mom and Jack went in the house and Papa went home and it was just Jason and Gwenny and uh, she had her little backpack. So first she drank her milk, <laughs> then she ate her Kit Kats and her chips, then she was ready to go in. Yeah. <laughs> they made it 54 minutes. <laughs> So I said to her yesterday, I said, what are you, are you sleeping out tonight? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I doubt she did, but that was her plan. <laughs> Anyone else? Also, to the Boltons, to give them um, safe travel flights to Canada and they get from the floor to the United States for the next three weeks here in the water, running around, so I just pray for their safety. We won't see you for a while. Okay. Anyone else? I would just you know, ask the prayers for. Um, I, I, I lost a good friend this week, um, and uh, from Newcastle, and uh, I would just ask the prayers for her. Mary Ann's her name. I would just ask the prayers for her husband and brother. Anyone else? Let's pray. Holy Father, we are so grateful to be here worshiping with the family you have given us. And as we come to you this day, we look around at a world that seems to be in chaos. But we know it's not. We know that you are still in control, and we praise you for that. We're grateful that as we celebrate this weekend, our independence, that we're here worshiping with you. We're grateful that we have that freedom to do so. We pray that the freedoms that we had a few months ago are the freedoms that we will have again. But no matter what, we know that you are in control of our lives and there's just no better place for us to be. And we praise you this day for that fact. We praise you for the fact that you give us hope in the midst of hopelessness. You give us peace in the midst of chaos. You give us comfort 
in the midst of this crazy world. And so we just praise you this day. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And when we come to this place, may all that we do in this worship service be worthy of your name. And also, when we leave this place, may we sense that we've been in the presence of greatness, your presence. Also, we bring our joys and our concerns to you this day. We think of Bill and Gail and their family that's beginning the grieving process. We think of Ruth's friends, her family, they're beginning the grieving process. Heavenly Father, comfort them this day. Help them to, to know that you are with them. Also, we think of Jen and Heather as they struggle each and every day. Our prayer is that you encourage them and that you lift them up and that you continue to be with them. We thank you that Jen had a normal day yesterday. It's not to be taken lightly. We're so grateful that Mark and his family are here today. We think of joys of children's birthday parties, and it puts a smile on our face. Will is now home from rehab, and that's a wonderful thing. John is worshiping with us today. We thank you for that. Landry, day by day, he's getting better and he's doing well. We ask for continued healing there. We thank you for the blessings of grandchildren and now great-grandchildren. And Dave and Donna are truly blessed. We think of Ray and Wendy and the family as they travel. We ask for traveling mercies. We pray that you will keep them safe and that soon they will be back worshiping with us again. Oh, Father, you do so many things in our lives. Forgive us when we miss those things. Forgive us when we fail to see your hand in all that's happening. Help us to remember Jesus this day. The sacrifice that he made for us. The things that he taught us and the prayer that he taught us. These are his words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the land is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
scripture for the message this day comes from the Old Testament book of Psalm, chapter 23. I've already read it once, and I'll read it again. You can't hear it too many times. Listen for the words of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is God's holy word. Now, as I read verse 4, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In the message that Eugene Peterson translated the Bible in modern day language, verse 4 is read this way Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I am not afraid when you walk by my side. As we celebrate the 4th of July this weekend, we see that we are experiencing valleys. Life's been difficult in America for a while, and David also knew about life's valleys. He was a shepherd. Not an easy job. He fought Goliath when he was just a young boy. He had fled from King Saul. He was a murderer, and then he had to live with that guilt. He was father of two sons. One was a rapist. The other died. So David knew valleys. He knew valleys in this life. And today's scripture talks about valleys. Now this is going to be a two-part series, the, the valley and the, the shepherd. And this week we're talking about the valleys. Next week we'll talk about the shepherd. And as I read verse 4, and I'll read it one more time, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will feel no fear, no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And the first thing that we see about valleys is valleys will come. Do you hear me? Valleys will come in this life. You know, bad things happen. And the worst thing that we can have in this life are unrealistic expectations. When we think that life is going to be easy, when we think that life will be trouble-free, that we won't have any difficulties and struggles, it's not a good thing. And it's no wonder that we think that when we see some TV preachers that come out and they say, you'll never have problems once Christ is, is your Savior, as long as you send me that money. There'll be no disappointments. There'll be no struggles. There'll be no difficulties in this life. But it's just not biblical. It's not true. In fact, in Scripture, in John chapter 16, it says, in this world, you will have troubles. It doesn't say you might have troubles. It says you will have troubles. It's not a matter of if you have troubles. It's a matter of when you will have troubles. You will experience disappointment. You will experience discouragement, suffering, sorrow, sickness, frustrations, failures. So then, I, are you down yet? <laughs> are you down yet? Because valleys will happen. Valleys are normal in this life. We shouldn't be shocked and we shouldn't be surprised when we experience a valley because we will experience them. In 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, Do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange was happening to you. 
See, that's the normal. Those valleys are normal in our lives. There will be valleys. Days when the sun doesn't shine. Days when things seem black and gloomy outside. There are valleys of doubt, valleys of despair, discouragement, defeat. There are also financial valleys, relational valleys, emotional valleys. Maybe a friend has turned the back on you and it's a very painful thing. Or maybe someone else got the promotion that you thought you were going to get. Maybe you're struggling this day with illness. Or maybe your children have disappointed you. There will be persecutions and problems in this life. There will be difficult days. There will be difficult times in your life. And everyone will face them. Some more some less. Some will be deeper, some not so deep. Some will last a long time, and some not so long. David, he knew about valleys, but the thing he also knew is God walked with him in those valleys. And he knew that was important. There's nothing worse than being alone. So the question is, are you in a valley today? Who is walking with you in that valley? Are you alone? Or maybe you have some friends that are walking in the valley with you. Maybe your family is right there with you. Or is it God Almighty? Is he the one that's with you in the valley? In today's scripture, we see that we will have valleys and so the question is, what can we learn about those valleys? And we've already learned that valleys will come. But also, valleys are unpredictable. They'll come when you least expect them to come. They'll come when you don't have time for them. You'll, they'll come when you don't have the resources to deal with them. When you're unprepared for them. When it's inconvenient. I mean, think about it. Has there ever been a good time to have a flat tire? Has there ever been a good time when your car wouldn't start? Has it ever been a great time to get sick? And the answer to all of those is no. And then you also notice how quickly a good day can turn to bad. It might be a phone call. We might receive a letter. A routine visit to the doctor's office or an accident those things can quickly change your day and I think about last January when everything was great the stock market was booming it was great our 401ks were secure everything was great and then this thing called COVID-19 hit and everything changed didn't it and then we're hoping the stock market starts to look a little bit better and we're hoping things are finally getting better, the reports are better, and the murder of George Floyd happens. And then there's rioting and protesting. And a world and this country is totally divided. They all happened at the worst time, didn't they? Bad time. At times we are in valleys in this country right now. And another thing we see about valleys, valleys are impartial. It doesn't matter how good you are, it doesn't matter how bad you are, everyone will have problems. Everyone will have trials and difficulties and struggles in this life. But I want you to know something, it doesn't mean God's mad at you. It means that you're a person. It means that you're human. Bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. In Matthew it says it, rule, it rains on the just and the unjust too. You see, all of us are gonna have problems. God's not mad, he's not punishing us. All these things happen to all of us. So I want to say, just look around. 
If you're discouraged this day, if you're struggling this day, just look around because there are other people that struggle too. In fact, they might be struggling far more than you are. So pay attention. You see, things could be worse. In fact, things might get worse. They come. They're, they're very unpredictable and they're impartial. And now with all that bad news, now I want to give you some good news about valleys. Do I get an amen out of that? Amen. Here it is. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here's the good news about valleys. Are you ready? They're temporary. They will not last forever. They do have a time when they will end. They're like a tunnel. They have a beginning, a middle, but they also have an end. All of us have heard the light at the end of the tunnel. Jesus is that light at the end of the tunnel. But you need to know that he's with you at the beginning and the middle also. In 1 Peter it says, there is a wonderful joy ahead, even though the going is rough for a while. You see, we go through rough times. We go through tough times, but just for a while, because the valleys are temporary in heaven. That's the joy that's ahead. And there are no problems there. There are no valleys there. There are no dark days in heaven. And as we look the second part of six, it says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, if Christ is your savior, the end result is heaven. That's the good part that we have to look forward to. And I want to say something, and I don't mean to minimize anybody's problems because they're hard to go through. But if you live to be 90 and you have problems every day of your life for those 90 years, it's just a drop in the bucket compared to all eternity. Now there's one other thing you need to know about valleys. They have purpose. Did you hear me? There is a reason for the pain and the suffering in this world. We've all heard this, no pain, no gain. It's so true. Every problem that we face, the big ones, the small ones, they all have purpose. God has a reason to allow them. Whether it's doubt, depression, despair, discouragement or defeat, they all have purpose. You know, don't we all love the mountaintop? We all love to be on the mountaintop. It makes us comfortable. And we all like to be comfortable. But I want you to know something, faith is built in the valleys. That's where we build our faith. When things are great and everything's going wonderful, we tend to feel like we don't need Jesus because everything's wonderful. When you're closer to God, is that through the good times or the bad times? And I can almost guarantee it's through the bad times. And here it is, God's goal is not to make us comfortable in this life. You hear me? It's not to make us comfortable. It is to make us dependent on him. And it's to make us more like Jesus. Was Jesus free from suffering? No, he wasn't. Did Jesus go through times of loneliness? Yes, he did. Was Jesus ever misunderstood, maligned, criticized unjustly? Yes, he was. There's a purpose to valleys. It proves our faith. It makes us totally dependent on Christ. And they make us more like Jesus. It draws us nearer to the Heavenly Father. In 1 Peter, in verses 6 and 7, 1, 6, 7, it says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now, that's 
here. For a little while, you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ is revealed. Did you hear that? So that your faith may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. <clears throat> and then in verse 9, here it is. The goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That's the important stuff here. And have you ever noticed that Christians are like tea bags? You don't find out what they're made of until they're in hot water. Isn't that true? Then it separates the men from the boys. So I'm going to tell you this day, don't be discouraged. Understand this. God will not take you around in your valley. He will not take you over it. He will not take you under it, but he will take you through the valleys that you face in this life. He said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Now, there was a woman, not an older woman, a young woman, and she complained all the time. She complained about everybody, and we all know somebody that's like that. That complains all the time. Well, she did. She was just, she said, I, you know, she said, I just don't think I can go on. I'm just so tired of everything. I'm so fed up. I've just had enough. But her father, who was a chef, took her into the kitchen and he put three big pots of water boiling on the stove. And once they were boiling really good, he took a potato and he put in one. He took an egg and he put in the other one. And he took coffee beans and put in the last one. And then they waited about 20 minutes. Then he went over, he took out the potato, he took out the egg, and he took out the coffee beans. And he said to his daughter, he said, now what do you see? So I see potato, egg, coffee beans. No, look, look closer. And so she touched the potato and found it, and she said, well, the potato's soft. And he said, crack the shell on the egg. Cracked it. Well, it was hard inside. And then he ladled the coffee and he gave her a sip of it. And the aroma was beautiful. And he said, Now, what does that mean? And said, I don't know. He said, When you're faced with adversity like hot water, it can make you soft inside like the potato, or it can make you hard like the egg, or it can change you and change the things around you, the essence of who you are. In life, things happen to us. Things happen around us. But what matters is what happens within us. That's what matters most of all. If you haven't trusted God as your shepherd, the troubles at work, the interruptions in this life, the broken dreams, the illnesses will be nothing more than troubles at work, interruptions in life, broken dreams and illnesses. But if you trust God as your shepherd, then the troubles at work, the interruptions in life, the broken dreams, the illnesses, and may I add COVID-19 and riots, with those, if we trust him as our shepherd, it'll just be a pause in our life. And then those, that pause will allow us to experience presence of God. There will be valleys in your life. They'll come. And you can't predict when they're going to come. And they're impartial. They hit everyone. But the good news of this day is they're temporary. And they have a purpose. Valleys have the power to make us or break us. It all depends on who you're walking with. Are you walking with God? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for your great love. And we thank you for the difficulties in our lives because those difficulties cause us to depend on you. Causes us to rely on you. Causes us to need you. There's just one person here that doesn't have the assurance, that blessed assurance that he 
these difficulties and struggles will end. Today is the day. Ask Christ to take hold of your life and change you so that when the difficulties come, you know who's walking with you, that you're walking with us, Father. Just praise you this day. Think of our country, and it seems hopeless, but you give us hope. It seems like it's out of control, but you have it under control. Sometimes we seem very lonely, but you're with us. So we praise you for all those things and all the things that you do in our lives. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise because you are the only one worthy of those things. In your name and in the name of the one we depend on. Amen. At this time, our closing hymn, The Lord is My Shepherd. If you are able, please stand. for you. When you leave this place today, don't walk out of here alone. Mm -hmm. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.